Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. It's time for a Stashing with Stephanie video. That's where once a month we come out with a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern that you can use to bust your stash or we usually have kits available. We do this month as long as supplies last. If you are a member of the Stashing with Stephanie Club, you're gonna get this pattern for free. And you also have already received the fabric. For those of you who aren't, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it while we take a look at the fabric. So this month we are using Newsprint by Cotton and Steel. I really liked this because what they did is Cotton and Steel is completely rebranded and they are now featuring designers from around the world. So this is a collection all from designers from Japan and they have taken the designs and they have put them in sort of a neutral color tone palette. So it's lots of grays, beiges, and as we get a little bit further down, uh, some blacks as well. So it is a really cool color combination to use. I really like the way that this looks and the way it looks together. And we're going to use it to make a Bargello style quilt that is modern. We're calling it Frequency because it looks like sound waves, which is really kind of fun. If you join the Stash and with Stephanie Club, you get 12 fat quarters for the price of 10, that's $29.99 each month. And then you also get a coupon code for $10 off a $20 purchase. So if you need to get additional binding or backing fabric or neutral or anything that's related in that line, then you can do that. And you also get the free pattern, not just that month's free pattern, but all the other ones that we've released to date. I believe there are almost eight or nine now. So it's a lot of free patterns. It's a really big value and you get access to that, those patterns immediately, the digital versions of them. And we also have paper patterns as well and your coupon code will be valid on those. So let's get started. I'm really excited about this quilt. It is almost entirely strip piece, so it goes really fast. And I started this quilt just about a week ago and I always try to get a little bit done before I do the video as much as I can really so that way I can give you the best tips and tricks in getting it together. And I'm just amazed at how quickly this is getting for how small a pieces that are in it. So when you see it, don't be intimidated by it. It really goes really quick. So let's get started. So first things first, what I've done is I've kind of lined these fabrics up in order of lightest to darkest. That way it's going to travel from the lightest fabrics to the darkest when I am doing my strip piecing. So whether you're using the fabrics that we are using here or you are mixing and matching from your own stash or doing a completely different colorway, that's what you wanna do. You wanna order it from lightest to darkest so that way when we start doing the Bargello style, that color change is going to sort of weave in and out to create those sound waves as we place that. So here's the other really good trick you're going to want to use. What I'm doing, because we have to eventually get this into a tube, is when I line up my pieces here, I'm going to line it up so that way my selvages are nice and even with each other, like this. That way I'm going to have something to line up against and I'm going to have a nice straight tube to cut down when we get to the Bargello part. So make sure as you are strip piecing all these together that you are always lining up those selvage edges. All right, so now I'm just going to sew my quarter inch stitch all the way down here. Now you could sew these just keeping on adding to the strip each time. What I found was easier was to sew everything into sets of two. So what I'm gonna do next is flip these guys right sides together because these are pieces three and four in my light to dark color spectrum here. And I can just start sewing those guys together next. All right, so now I have everything sewn into sets of two. And before we sew some more, I'm gonna go ahead and press these. I like to press my seams open for this. It makes for really flat sewing and it helps keep your strips from getting that little bend in them that sometimes happens when you're sewing long strips together. Let me show you how. Working from the wrong side of the fabric, I'm gonna open up that seam with my fingertips. Then I'm gonna put the nose of my iron right down the center of that seam. And with my four fingers down just ahead of the iron, I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight down that seam. What you wanna make sure you're looking for is that when you are all done, you have a nice straight line here. This seam, as I'm looking at it here, is perfectly straight. If you have done it wrong, if there like is a pleat on the other side, then it'll look a little wiggly in here and you'll actually be able to feel that extra fabric when you see it. So what you're looking for is this nice straight, straight line as you're going through. Go ahead and finish that out. 
And I don't like lift and press and lift and press. I just go straight down, keeping the center of my iron right down there when I'm doing these long strips. Now I'd like to also hit it from the other side here. And this is another area where you can double check to make sure you've done this right. If you see any pleats or puckers or anywhere where it's not perfectly straight, it means you probably have pressed the pleat into it and you need to fix that or your fabric is not gonna turn out the right size. You can also see here, I've got this edge with the selvage completely straight with each other. And that is so when we make the tube, we have something to line it up with so we have a nice straight tube as we go as opposed to something with a little bend in it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go ahead and sew all these together into sets of four and then eventually um, sew them into a giant tube. And I already have a tube ready to go, so we're gonna take a look at that right now. All right, so this is what the tube looks like when it is all sewn together. You can see it is all sewn completely from one side to the other. And you can see here that what I did when I joined it, so here's my darkest piece sewn to my lightest piece. And I've made sure that this part up here was exactly even with those selvages when they got lined up. That way when we go to the next step and we're going to cut them apart, it goes much easier because you have a nice straight tube to work with. If you get this off, then it's going to have like a little bit of a bend in it and it's not gonna work quite right. All right, so I've got my tube laid out and you can't see the bottom of it, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your ruler on it and you wanna make sure that the measurement you're cutting to is beyond this. So like, say if you were doing this and it was three inches wide, well, you would wanna make sure that three inches it, starts after this bit. Otherwise you're gonna end up with selvage in your piecing and that's not good, that's not what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that lined up. I'm not gonna give you the measurements exactly here because we want you to get the pattern. If you see something that you love from us, you wanna support us, get the materials and the pattern from us and that will help keep the free video tutorials coming to you. So we thank you for that. So what I'm gonna do is just line everything up and I'm making sure that a nice inch line of the ruler is even with the top. And then I'm kind of checking as I go down that I'm also even here. Your quarter inch seam might not be absolutely perfect, but as long as you're hitting parallel to your seam line, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be fine as long as you can sew consistently throughout your piece. So as long as I'm making sure that the measurement that I need to cut this to is past where that selvage is, I'm gonna be good to go here. So now I'm just gonna cut. All right, now for this first part, I need to flip everything around and I need to square this up. And I'm gonna make sure that I kind of scooch everything over to make sure that my edges are nice and lined up still so that everything is the size it's supposed to be. All right, so this we can get rid of. We don't need that, but we do wanna keep these. And what I do is I just stack them to the side as I'm cutting. So going forward for all of these, you can just keep on cutting all the way down until you've cut as many as you can from your strip tube. And then we're going to move on to the next step where we start sewing the top together. So you've essentially already created almost all of the rows for this. We're going to put them together next, but all this piecing, all this here that you've already done, it's already all together and we are almost ready to get this top together. So it does go a lot faster than it looks even though we're doing with little pieces for this month's pattern. So right now you really need to refer to your assembly diagram in your pattern because you should not have numbered your fabrics from one through 12 and that way you know exactly where you're supposed to be cutting. I'm gonna sew together rows one and two in this video and once you know how to do that, you're gonna be able to do everything you need to do for this pattern. So this is a modern Bargello style quilt. And what that means is the pieces are going to kind of move out in a staggered but planned order as they go out. And it also means that we don't need to use any seam rippers or rotary cutters for the rest of the cutting. We're just gonna use a trusty pair of embroidery scissors. I really like my micro tip ones. They have a spring loaded action, so they just pop open. So if you have hand problems, they're great for that. And they're also really sharp. We've got these on our website, shop.quiltedxnomis.com. All right, so for step for row one, what I need to do is you can see the white line where that seam is, and I'm just going to cut right on top of where that seam was to take off that seam allowance. And I know this is kind of scary because we're cutting into a seam allowance, but it works out perfectly. 
All right, so now I can open that up and I've got one half of my row. I'm going to repeat that with the other side. And now I have the other half of my row for row one. So we already have everything pieced together. We just have to sew this little center seam together and row one is complete. So it's super fast, super quick. All right, so now we're gonna get row two ready to go. What I like to do, and what I found works best for my brain where I'm least likely to screw up, is to do two rows at a time. So I'll do one and two and then three and four because you are just going to go out halfway and that'll make sense in just a second here. All right, so this seam is part of the one, it was the last one that was sewn together when the tube was joined. So what I need to do is I need to press the seam open so I have a guide to do. So I'm gonna do that real quick here. So just like before, I just open that up and press that seam open. So in order to create the Bargello style, we need to have this lightest fabric here start in the middle. So what I'm going, and then everything else kind of you know, staggers down. So what I'm gonna do here is now that we have these seams pressed open is I'm gonna fold them in half and I'm gonna meet up those folds on either side, just like that. So you can see here, I've got the folds right on top of each other where those seam allowances are. So they're right on top. So once I'm satisfied with that placement, I'm, I double check both sides so that I have a nice straight edge on top. I'm just gonna pinch that and then I'm just gonna finger crease that to give myself a center. And then I'm going to stick my embroidery scissors in, give it a little trim, and now I have my stagger point. And these rows should be the exact same width when you do this. By cutting off those ends and then also by cutting it in half, you re remove the same amount of seam allowance. So your rows should be the same length when you put these together and they're really cool and it will just continue to create this graduated step motion. And it's really great. You just kind of have to pay attention to where you are at when you are trimming and getting everything ready to go. That's why I like to do two rows at a time and then I can look and see, okay, I did this next time. So that means next I need to move into the fabric that is after that, which would be having the whole one of this be next. So just refer to your pattern assembly diagram, make sure you are numbering your fabrics, make sure all your fabrics are sewn together in the same order when you are putting your tubes together. But if you do that and you just take it slow, you will be able to do this with no problem. And you can mess up a couple of them because I certainly have as I've been doing this. When I make the pattern um, for the first time, I usually I'm writing it as I go. So I don't have something to follow. I'm making those notes and making those mistakes so I know where to tell you guys where to watch out for. And this is one of them. So I recommend just doing two rows at a time and you'll be good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy a trim and then we're gonna sew these guys together and join our rows. All right, so I got that fold again. Give it a little trim. And then line it up. So you can see how this is starting to look cool already because that it's just going to be that graduated step out. All right, so now I'm gonna fold these right sides together so I can sew these center two seams together, still using that quarter inch seam. All right, so I really just have to line these up like I would any other fabric I was sewing together. And it's not a huge amount, so it is, you don't have to pin this. You can totally get away with skipping that if you want, um, but by all means pin it if you feel like that will help you. Then to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna chain piece the next row in. So now I'm gonna give these a little press and it's important to remember that you're gonna have more than just a seam that you just sew to go together because you also, in some cases, are gonna have that area where it was pressed open, um, where that last join was. We already did it for this one, but that's not the case for all of them. And a lot of times the seam here was where the edge of the tube was. So it kind of got flattened out a little bit when I was doing my cutting. So I want to just hit that again as well. Just make give it a good look to make sure everything is nice and flat before you proceed. All right, so this part's really cool. You're going to have no seams to match 
at all ever for the entire rest of the assembly of this quilt except for the center seam so it's no big deal it's pretty easy and even that you've got two of the same fabrics together so if you're a little off nobody is ever going to know so what i do is i lay them right sides together and i just look from the top to make sure, since those seams are pressed open, that those seams are right on top of each other. You can always peel this back a little bit to see how you're doing. And then I put a little pin in the right side of that seam allowance because when we are sewing, we're going to be sewing through from here. And then I can stop with my needle down on the left side of the seam allowance, pull the pin, and then everything will stay in place. Now, since there's a lot of seams here, but none of them match, that means that I really don't pin that much for the rest of this. So I'm gonna go all the way down to the end of the strip, and then I'm going to match those corners, put a pin in, and from here I take it one half at a time. So what I do is I'm gonna grab the halves where the pins are, and then I'm gonna just lay them down and kinda of hit about the middle. And I like to put the pin in where there is a seam on the back. And that just kind of gives me a good stopping point. I'm not judging that this is like exactly in the middle. It's just halfway, like a quarter of the way in between. Then I'm going to split that again. So we've got our pins at the middle and then at the quarter. And I'm going to do the same thing here where I just kind of pull them taut, lay them down, make sure my edges are nice and lined up, put a pin in. And again, that's through the seam allowance. Another one. Do that one more time on this half. All right, so I've got a pin at the end, quarter way through, and halfway in between that in the middle, and again, halfway in between the quarters. I'm going to repeat that on the other side, getting these ready to go in the sewing machine. And when I'm doing this part, once I have all my ones together. The way I kind of split it up is I did half of one of the frequencies at a time. So when I did it, I kind of just based it on how many I could fit on my table. If I could have fit more then I would have done more. But I could fit about half on when I was just laying out the rows. And then once I was pretty good, I could see all the steps. I knew everything was going in the right order. Then I took a break and I started sewing them all in the sets of two and four and so on until I had an entire half together. And then I would move on and do the bottom half where it comes back together. I find that that really helps if you can think about how you're going to break up the construction of a quilt. Because if you're just looking at all of these really thin rows, it can seem a little overwhelming. But if you think of it in sections like that, like first I'm just going to get all my rows together for half of one of these. And then I'm going to get those together and then I'm going to move on and I'm to do another half and then you can easily break that up into a couple hour segments and really feel like you've made some progress so that's how I kind of tackle it in my head you do what works for you so I do leave this first pin in long enough just to get those first couple of stitches in so I know that that is good and secure and then what I do is I kind of just pull it taut until that first pin so I'm always kind of working from pin to pin here and I just kind of put my hand down to kind of keep it nice and taut. You don't want to stretch it out. That would be bad. But you do want to keep it kind of snug. And the other thing is because there's a lot of these seam allowances here, I kind of lift up every time I go over this lip to make sure that those are laying nice and flat. And yes, if I do flip, have one flip, I will unpick that and flip it nice and flat because that will ensure that my quilt lays super flat and I can do whatever I want when it comes to quilting. So again, every time I get there, just kind of lift this up and that kind of helps that seam that's pressed flat just lay the way it's supposed to. All right, so I've got to the first pin. So again, I'm just gonna grab until I've got that other pin and I'm just gonna repeat as I go down this strip sewing my quarter inch seams. the seam open as well but I'm going to do it a little bit differently just because we have all these seam allowances that I don't want to get pressed going in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do here is start just like before where I open up that seam allowance but instead of just sliding the iron straight down I am still opening that up with my fingertips but I'm going to lift and press for this one. So just lift and press your way all the way down and that will help keep these seam allowance from getting pushed in the wrong direction as you are working. 
Once you work your way all the way down, you're going to flip everything over and you're also going to press from the other direction. This one I do just slide straight down. If anything feels like it has curved at all, what you can do is you can just kind of straighten that out however you need to as you press. And if you feel like anything needs to get a little bit flatter, you can always use a little bit of spray, um, just water or a spray stealth alternative. And I tend not to use steam in my iron. I feel like that distorts the fabric and I'm worried it's going to damage the iron. So I prefer to just use an external source like that water bottle or a spray starch alternative if I feel like I want to get it even flatter than what the iron has done on its own, which is plain heat. All right, so we're going to keep doing that. We're going to get all of our rows together and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all joined. All right, so you're going to join your rows in the sets of two and four and so on until you have one entire frequency put together. And there are a couple of these throughout the quilt that you're going to put together. And you can see here how it just sort of goes out. So you've got your whole one and then a half, a whole and a half, and it just keeps going out and out. And because we've sewn that in a tube, all you have to do is snip in the right spot and use your assembly diagram and your pattern to go with this. The pattern is called Frequency. You can get that at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I recommend you label your fabrics so that way you know which one is which number so that you end up with the right area and you can see it comes back to center there and then here's the kind of fun thing about this quilt um, it worked out really well math wise for it to be the length to be kind of the length of a not quite a twin but close to it and then the width once you get all of these together is perfect for like a lap twin size we're putting them together as vertical rows and so when it's all together this is what it looks like as a vertical row and you can see it kind of looks like a sound wave going in and out. We'll show some photos of the finished quilt to you all so you can see that as well. But again, if you want to join along and get in on the fun, you can always join Stashing with Stephanie for $29.99 a month. And that gets you 12 fat quarters for the price of $10, a $10 off a $20 purchase coupon. Pet free patterns, every single pattern that we've ever done for Stashing with Stephanie, you get access to for free as soon as you join up. And... We've already sent out this fabric. This was the fabric that we sent out for April. But if you, or May, it's May, isn't it? It's almost June. Time is flying by. It's been a busy spring for us here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Um, so we've already sent this out as our May bundle, but we do have more of it while supplies last. So go ahead and order that at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. This is called Newsprint, and we use the entire bundle of that. And it is from Cotton and Steel with the rebrand where they are focusing on fabric designers from around the world. This features all of the artists from Japan. So thanks so much for following along. If you liked what's going on in our video tutorial, please like and subscribe here on YouTube and ring the bell so you know when we're getting new videos. You also can sign up for our emails over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We have hundreds of free video tutorials and we specialize in modern contemporary quilting fabrics over there. So if this is your jam, come check us out. We'd love to have you over there. Thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting.